Well, all right, we got two leads that I'm a fan of in a satirical comedy. I'm here for it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my Honk for Jesus Save Your Soul movie review. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, guys, so now we have Honk for Jesus Save Your Soul, a very interesting title to me, and the true meaning does reveal itself towards the end of the film. This is a movie that I necessarily wasn't looking forward to, but I wasn't dreading it either. I mean, I am a fan of Sterling K. Brown, and I'm a big fan, an even bigger fan, of Miss Regina Hall. This woman is hilarious. She has never disappointed me on screen to date. This is also being directed by Adame Ebo, and I'm pretty sure I'm butchering in that name Adama Ebo so please forgive me this is her right here on IMDB and there is no picture for her but if we scroll down to her filmography she does have five credits a number of shorts but with Honk for Jesus being her first full-length feature not only is she the director of this movie but she is also the writer and producer as well and i do want this woman to win if i want to go a little bit further this is what she looks like on google but like i said my expectations for this film were low i mean when i did see the trailer i chuckled a little bit but it wasn't anything that got me excited but when i was going into this i was like hey i like regina hall sterling k brown is cool i hope i do have a good laugh that's all I wanted. But before I get into all the nitty gritty, all my likes and dislikes, let me tell you exactly what this film is all about. Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul is a satirical comedy starring Regina Hall as Trinity Childs, the proud first lady of a Southern Baptist megachurch who together with her husband, Pastor Lee Curtis Childs, Sterling K. Brown, once served a congregation in the tens of thousands. But after a scandal forces their church to temporarily close, Trinity and Lee Curtis must reopen their church and rebuild their congregation to make the biggest comeback that commodified religion has ever seen. All right, guys, so the first thing that I did like about this movie was the representation of big, large mega churches and how ridiculous some of them can get. Now, you notice I did say some because all mega churches are not bad. All mega churches are not ridiculous. But if you do turn on the TV, I'm pretty sure today you're going to find a mega church somewhere in America that is doing the most, that is going over the top, that is getting a bit ridiculous in their faith. And this film does do a decent job of representing that. And also does a decent job of representing a lot of things in the black church, how some, not all, but some can get caught up in the competition with their members in other churches. Like who has the highest numbers? Who has the biggest congregation? There are elements throughout this film and I thought that that was fairly expressed as well. And as the synopsis did suggest, this is a satirical comedy, a kind of real world behind the scenes look of what a pastor and wife first lady, Regina Hall's case, does look like behind the scenes and everything that they have to go through. We all know that our relationships aren't perfect. Neither are all marriages, neither are all churches. There's no such thing as a perfect church, a perfect congregation. But if you are familiar with a lot of them, they do put forth a front, making you feel that things are this way when they are really the other. And they did a great job of representing that as well. But I do like the behind the scenes look. I do like how they talked about how things Things can be over exaggerated and drama filled and how a lot of church members or pastors can get caught up in all the material things instead of having faith in God. Like I have to have a helicopter. I have to have a jet. I have to have a plane. I have to have the latest Prada suits and look good. You know, I have to sell the part. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with making money and wanting to look good. But at the same time, you have to be careful with that and not fall into a trap that is set by the devil. And this film kind of does tackle all that in its own interesting way. And it also addressed the pettiness that there can be in mega churches, or even just small churches, just churches in general, and how sometimes black people can communicate amongst each other, whether it's genuine or it's a bunch of cap. 
they had sprinkles of all of that in this movie. There's a lot of drama and there are some scandals and I've known about a couple of myself coming up in the black church. Again, not saying that this is every church, but I have heard this and heard that and some of it's been confirmed and I was watching this movie like, yep, that's about right. I can understand where they're coming from. But the absolute best thing in this movie was Regina Hall played by Trinity Childs. She was fantastic. Pretty much every time she was on the screen, she stole the show. I was laughing at her. This woman is very talented. She is very gifted. She is very funny. And like I've said before, she has never disappointed me when she has been on the big screen and she did not disappoint me in this film either. And it just comes natural to her. Just her comedic timing, her comedic elements. I mean, she is just being herself on screen. And that's the great thing while also dipping into the character. And I felt sorry for her character too. I, I was able to sympathize with her just a little bit, empathize as well. And I wanted her to win. And I kind of saw all the stuff that she had to go through how she's made all these sacrifices and put others before her and bit her tongue in so many ways but you know she is really screaming on the inside and I got to see all of that in her performance and I absolutely loved it but now let's get over to some things that I really did not care for in this movie this is a satirical comedy but it just was not funny to me unfortunately there were a number of times where I did kind of chuckle but it just wasn't funny overall the theater that I went to there was about half full and there was a lot of other people laughing out loud throughout and they was laughing at some of the same things I was laughing at but more than half the time I was quiet while a number of other people were laughing. I mean for me in my theater experience it was split down the middle. I heard people talking about this afterwards and hey did you like this? Did you like the movie? And I was just kind of going around asking a couple of people and it was like it was okay. You know it was different you know. I never, I didn't expect that. And I was kind of expecting something else. And that was kind of the general consensus. You know, when the critics hit, you know, there was no clapping or everybody excited. I mean, it, it was just a weird experience to be honest with you. Now, if you look on Rotten Tomatoes, it's 53 reviews at 83%. And I am one that does not agree with that. And so I don't know, I was say that this is split down the middle, but it's looking like majority of the critics do like it on Rotten Tomatoes but I'm just not there. I mean, with Regina Hall, she was funny. Everything about her was great, but the rest of the movie was not. And that brings me to my next gripe in the film, Sterling K. Brown. My goodness gracious, I could not stand his character at all. I mean, I despise this character. And maybe that's the point, him, and him fulfilling the role of Lee Curtis Childs. I mean, like I said, this is a satirical comedy, and they are making fun of a lot of things that happen in real life in, in the black church. So it's probably the point that we're not supposed to like this conniving snake oil type character because I mean in my opinion he was despicable he was extremely delusional had his own sense of reality and he needed to come down to earth because he is floating up in the upper atmosphere looking like a damn fool that was probably the point of his character that was possibly the joke but it just didn't resonate for me at all and I wasn't having any part of it I also just don't like the way his character was depicted or the stereotype of a black man and or a black man in a black church or a mega church that really did rub me the wrong way I mean it's just unfortunate that Regina Hall and Sterling K. Brown shared the same amount of screen time. While I love Regina Hall, I did not like Sterling K. Brown at all. This character got on my damn nerve and it was very, 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 very cringeworthy a number of times. You know, they bounced off of each other quite interestingly because he was in his own world while she was suffering, screaming at the top of her lungs inside. And I felt for her, like I said, and you know, that made me you know, won her character to win. But as far as Curtis Lee, Lee Curtis, I didn't give a crap. I didn't give a crap whether he succeeded or failed. This just was a character that I didn't like at all. This was a very quiet movie. At some points, they did have a nice soundtrack, but at other points, you know, they came through with a nice score. And I really wish they would have done that more because it could have helped with the pacing of this movie because it kind of felt all over the place and had bad pacing. And to the point where I was just counting the minutes, like, okay, how much time do we have left before the film started? I know it said it's about an hour and 45 minutes. 
And I was just waiting and waiting and waiting for that time to hit because I just was not having the best time. But I'll give my rating for this at the very end, guys. But for now, that is just my opinion. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, helping me reach my next milestone of 50,000 subscribers. And if you do subscribe to my channel, these are just some of the things you will get. You're going to get movie reviews, spoiler movie reviews, series reviews, a weekly movie news roundup show that I host every Sunday, 6 p.m. CST, interviews with some stars, and also me covering some of my favorite TV shows on TV or streaming right now, which is Mike Tyson, She-Hulk, Paw Book 3, Raising Canaan, Rap Shit, and I just rapped on P-Valley, and those are some initial or out-of-the-theater reactions. But guys, I, if I had to rate Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul out of a 1 out of 10, Unfortunately, it falls right below a passing grade for me, and I'm going to give this film a 5 out of 10. I was going to give it a 5.5, .5, but I think I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. It just didn't work for me. It worked for other people, but please do not let this detract you from seeing the film. If you still want to go see the film, go see the film. But guys, I just want to thank you again, and before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.